Good morning, you're watching The Right Stuff Extra with me, Gabby Logan. It's Thursday, the 25th of August, and we're ready and waiting to hear your opinions, your stories, and answer your questions. Here's what's coming up this morning. First, the Royals' Dr. Jill Weatherhill. Amy Robbins is here to tell us about her role in the West End, and she's going to be spilling the beans on what it's like to be married to her co-star. And then why one group of North London residents are battling to save their nature reserve. What it provides is a huge opportunity for schools and to... Uh, put real physical meaning behind the curriculum. It would be an awful waste if they, you know, did put concrete all over the place. So should the council let them continue with their project or would the land be better used for something else like housing? Let us know what you think. And then on Monday, it's exactly a year to go until the Paralympic Games begin in London. And wheelchair basketball star Helen Freeman is here to tell us how she's hoping to make gold. And in the final part of the show, Joe Ingalls will be answering all of your pet problems. What are you going to help us with today then, Joe? Well, anything you would normally take your pet to the vet for. So whether it's a physical problem, a lump or a bump or an itch or a scratch or a behavioural problem with your, your dog or your cat or a more exotic pet. And then later on, we're going to be meeting a dog that's had an £8,000 facelift. So I'm expecting him to be a pretty handsome boy. Thank you very much, Joe. If you want to get in touch on any of today's subjects, Kirsty has all the numbers. Thank you, Gabby, and good afternoon. The number to call, as usual, is 0207 173 555. Calls will set you back a maximum of 10 pence a minute, and that's based on a BT landline call, so mobile phone charges and other networks may vary. You can email us, write stuff extra at channel5.com, and if you'd like to send us a text, the number is 800088. Text will cost 25 pence plus your standard network charge. Not all messages will be shown on screen and always remember to put TWS before your comments. And of course, if you're on Twitter, you can also send us your tweets. Twitter.com forward slash TWS Extra. Thank you very much, Kirsty. Give us a call on any of our topics. We really want to hear what you have to say. But first, it's time to meet today's special guest, star of the hospital drama, The Royal. Please welcome Amy Robbins. Thank you so much for coming in to see us. <laughs> The Royal was such a hugely successful show, yeah. wasn't it? And, yeah. and it was such a great family show as well. Was that part of its appeal for you? I think so. It was certainly part of the appeal for, for my family because my entire family were there making it with me. My husband, Bob, who played Dr. Omrod, and um, we had our children while I was doing the series. So that was, that was our family life. You, you met know, for at years. the first script yeah, first, run through? Yes, we did, yes. We did, yeah. Love at first sight. He ignored me. <laughs> did he? Uh, did, no, did he play no, hard no. to get? No, it wasn't love at We just we we just friends really, and um, we got married quite quickly. I must admit. But you but must two have, two uh, children uh, later, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, that first script reading. Did you look across and think he's rather special? I love him. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I did. I thought he had a lovely face. He still has got a lovely face. He yeah. has. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got such a. He's one of those faces that you think I, I've seen him in so many things. Yes. As well. Oh, that's he's, what I thought actually. I thought I know, but I do that all the time. You know, I, I you know I, I meet celebrities occasionally. I, gosh, I know you from somewhere. Yes, of course I do. You know, I've been in Coronation Street for 20 years. <laughs> what, is, what is it like, though, living with somebody, uh, you know, married with them, and all the, you know, the issues that go along with being married, then going to work and being married as well? It's the oddest thing. It was, it was all we ever knew. So I didn't... There was no... There was nothing strange about it, because we'd met at work, and we used to sort of, you know, go to work together and sit in the dressing room together and do the crossword and make a cup of tea and... and uh, and that was just, it was just like being at home, but at work. And I, I, I never questioned it, never found it odd, um, because it's all we've ever known, I suppose. And it's actually more odd now that we're not working together. And now I think you we find that we really miss each good other. Mates. You we know, are, you must, yeah. yeah, and it's lovely, you know, and it sounds an obvious thing to say if you're married, but not everybody's married to their no. best mate. No, a lot of people say, oh, I couldn't be married to my husband, I'll kill him. You know, <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people probably wouldn't you know, thrive under those And conditions. what about the professional but things? Were you able to, if you had a scene together that wasn't going well, were you able to, to take yourselves out of your real-life marriage and be able to oh, yeah. critique each yeah. other? Yeah, especially if you had a row. Absolutely. You'd have to stay very professional. You'd have had a little tiff before you go on and, you know, you'd be sort of elbowing each other. But no, you, yeah, you just you just learn to just get on with it. And, and all that that you described, the, the relationship on set, the relationship at home, having your children mm -hmm. while you were, you know, mm -hmm. in the royal, when something like that comes to an end, it must be even more emotionally Well, uh, we were very glad goodbye. when it came to an end. Nobody told us that it was coming to an end because we didn't know at that point that it, that it was doing. And I was very grateful because if I'd known, because we were all such good pals on it, um, our, my very, our very good friend Linda, who played Sister Bridget and... Um, and, and Michelle and, and all of that lot. Um, if I'd have known we weren't going to be working together on the next series, I would have been 
utterly in bits. And I was very relieved, really, that, that it sort of petered out. Mm. We, we left that series thinking we were going to go back and do an, uh, another one. And then, of course, there were sort of, you kind of job losses left, right and centre. Offset, really. Yeah. And it was, it was so perennially popular. It kept coming back, coming back, coming back. When something like that leaves the screens, you, you do think, for, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's gone. Yeah, it was a I think fixture so. fixture on Sunday nights. It so. found its way into people's hearts quite quickly, I think, the world. Because of Heartbeat as well, I think, yeah. the connection. But it was going for nearly 10 years. It's longer than people Time think. for something yeah. new. And yeah. obviously, yeah. Mrs. Johnson, what a role yeah. to get your teeth into yes. in Blood Brothers. Mm. Had you played any part in Blood Brothers before? No. 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 I must be the only... Um, funnily enough, I, I knew not... I must be the only scouser in the land <laughs> that didn't know that much about it, really. I mean, I, I'm a massive fan of Willie Russell. I think yeah. most people are. You know, he's a brilliant writer. And I'd heard that it was a fabulous um, show. Um, but I, no, I, I think, um, so it was all sort of really new to me. And still is all new to me. I'm, I'm and still a bit sort of... Presumably you had done theatre work before you, you got into the Royal, oh, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. been a while yeah. since you'd tread the boards. Well, out. yeah, I mean, I trained for the theatre, you know, that's what you sort of train for when you go mm. to drama school and the rest of it. Um, and I'd done a lot of plays, and I'd done a musical on film, but I'd never done a musical professionally on stage. So what are the challenges then of going in, I mean, not just, not just every night, as you said to me earlier on, you've got a matinee today, yeah. going yeah. in every day and, and, you know, producing a performance that has to be just as good the as the The challenge one. is making sure you've got something in for the kids' tea before you leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> making sure that you, whoever's looking after them knows they've got to have their hair washed. Um, little Betty and May, by the way, my little babies, <laughs> they're watching. Um, that's the challenge, and, and trying not to be too tired when you get to the stage from, 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 from real life, you know, and then throwing myself into being a, another mum on stage. Um, no, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fabulous, it's a vocal challenge for me, because I do sing, but I'm not, you know... And emotional. I mean, it's a big, it's a emotional big thing. part as well, isn't it? Very emotional. And you have to sort of be aware that, you know, and you have to do it every night, and I don't want to shortchange people by just marking it and not throw myself into it so I do throw myself that's into it that's what I always wonder afterwards. though about when I you know when I go to the theatre yeah. and I watch actors and actresses who are playing the same scenes yeah. again and again and again you know, obviously I do this show every day but it's different guests you get mm. invigorated by the guests who are on you've got the same lines to deliver you have to just relive it every night you have to reinvent it every night I think I think it's the key and you've got to do something for a very long a six time. month run yes yeah. And, that, and that's a good, a good time to get your teeth into it and then look for something else. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, but six months is... is um, I've, so I've done a month now, so I'm now just settling into... I'm now not worrying about oh God, which bit comes next and yeah. I'm, sure I, I'm sure I should have moved to that bit. But that, you know, it takes a while to settle because you, you have a very short rehearsal period. But the rest of the cast are so brilliant because they've been doing it longer than I have. And they're just fab. And, and so even if you do get those moments, you think, I'm not sure where that... You know, they, they just... They just move, they just take charge of the whole thing. And before you know it, you swept back into it and it all takes charge yeah. of itself. Because it's a, such a good show. And polished isn't the right word. It's not polished in, in it's a bad gritty. sense. It's gritty, yeah. but it's polished in a good sense in that it's very, very together. You know? yeah. And you come from such a theatrical family. I know you're, some of your family were watching last night, weren't they? And you've yes, got, yeah. obviously, yeah. your brother a comedian, your yeah. sister an impressionist. Yeah. Does that make, when, when the family comes along, let alone your cousin Paul McCartney, <laughs> when they come along to watch you, does that make it even more nerve-wracking? Because they actually know. I did last night. I had my cousins, uh, Diane, Phil and Nancy, um, in last night. And uh, I was nervous, and, and actually Bob was watching last night, my husband, and he hadn't seen it before, he's been away at all. And I was nervous last night, I must admit. And it, and it came out of nowhere, because I've been doing it for a month, and I suddenly got that <coughs> knot. And that's quite a good thing, though, when you're a bit nervous, it's quite, it's quite good. Do a yes, bit. it does a bit. Because you get... A, you, you don't Your get family get-togethers must be fabulous. Oh, God, which bunch of show up. <laughs> 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 no, they're great. There's a lot of us. A lot of impersonating, a lot of singing. Yeah, a we're a bit of... like the Johnson family. I was thinking that last night as well. You know, there's so many of us, and we're all, you know, very, quite gregarious lot. But yeah. yeah. And where does that... Is that the parents? Is that your that parents? That was my mum and dad. I, yeah. My dad was in show business. Um, he was in variety, really. Just going back a bit now. Um, and my mum... Well, she wasn't in show business as such, but she was, you know, my mum was... She was, was a good show business mum. Yes, sort mm. of, yeah. Mm. Getting you all to the various classes and everything. And yeah. what about you with your... No, we never did any of that. We weren't show business in that sense. Not at all. I never went to a single dance class. No, nothing like that. I'm the only one that decided to take myself off to drama school. The, re the rest of it was just sort of, I don't know. It's a funny thing. I think a lot of Scouse families are... Natural performers. Yeah. 
Really, I think it is. I think it's a sort of an Irish thing. Do you think your anyway? kids growing up in the South will be a bit different? Oh, yeah, very woolly. Woolly Southerners. No. <laughs> yes, I think, I, think, I think it is a very different thing. Yeah. I think if you're in a big family from Liverpool, you have to fight for your voice. <laughs> yeah, for your moment. And yeah. so you learn to tell gags and sing songs, because that's the only way you'll get anyone to pay any attention. I think it that's how it works. It sounds like an enjoyable upbringing, then. Yeah, it was. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for the moment, oh, Amy. Okay. Stay with us. Uh, later in the show, vet Joe Ingalls will be answering all of your pet-related problems. So if your terrier has toothache or your goldfish is looking a bit glum, bit down in the mouth, give us a call for some expert advice. 0207 173 555 is the number to call. I know Amy has a question herself about her pet. After the break, why one in five women talk more to their pet than their partner. And Kirsty's been finding out why some North London residents are facing a battle to save their nature reserve. <laughs>